Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a building tutorial for Diesel Punk Wars. My name is Piotr Figarski, I work at Image Power as one of the developers of this game, and I will be your guide for this video. Before we begin, I would like to stress out that this game is still in development. There is a lot of work still ahead of us, and nothing you see here is final. If you want to help us make this game as good as it can be, then please, by all means, consider backing us on the Kickstarter. We would also really appreciate it if you told your friends about our project. Designing your vehicle is a key aspect of Diesel Punk Wars. It might seem like a little bit of a daunting task at first, but if you follow my instructions, you'll soon learn how to change your vehicle from this to this or any other type of contraption. First of all, if you're in play mode, which is going to be true for most of the time, please make sure you enter the build mode by pressing enter. In order to start with a blank slate, we also need to press the clear button at the top of the screen, which is going to strip your vehicle of all parts except for your command module, which is this box right in the center of my screen right now. The command module is the most important part of your vehicle. If you lose your command module, your entire vehicle will be destroyed. In order to protect it, we will need some armor. Open the structure tab. As you can see, we have a plethora of available armor types. Aside from having different shapes, these blocks also have different stats, which you can see in the lower left side of the screen. Moreover, you can also change the material that a given block is made out of, and you can see the impact of the material on the block's stats, which is rather important. For now, let's just simply surround our block with cubes. I'll activate the mirror mode to make this task a little bit faster. Alright, we now have a Rubik's Cube. Not quite what we need. After all, a vehicle should be able to move, right? And this one just kind of sort of stands there and doesn't really do anything, which is not ideal. Let's change that. Let's go into the Movement tab and slap some wheels on this cube. I'll use a mixture of small wheels as well as small turnable wheels. You really need to pick some turnable wheels if you choose to go for wheels on your vehicles because otherwise you won't really be able to turn. Now, wonderful! Our Rubik's Cube has wheels but it can't move just yet no matter how hard I try. In order to allow it to move forward, we're going to need some engines as well as some fuel. Let's head over to the support tab and uh, get access to the parts I just mentioned. Let's pick the diesel engine, because this is a diesel punk wars game after all. And let's also grab a liquid fuel tank. And slap them on and see what happens now. Alright, our cube moves and, well, sure it did move. But we clearly can't continue with this Rubik's Madness. Give me a moment to change this vehicle's shape to something a little bit more sensible. Here we are! As you can see, I decided to additionally add crew rooms to my vehicle, which can be seen right over here, and that's, those are the blocks that I used. Now, you must always make sure that you use crew compartments in your builds, because without these, your engines and weapons won't work as efficiently as they will with crew. Crew is quite essential, in fact. So, this is all good and Oh, but I want my vehicle to be even faster, so I'm going to go back into the movement uh, tab and select the rocket to install an afterburner uh, onto my vehicle. And let's go ahead and use some less ridiculous color for now. Alright, let's see how it helps us move. This is just the regular movement, and now with the afterburner it moves even faster. So far so good, but as you can see on the right side of the screen, our vehicle's engines heat up rather quickly. Not ideal, not ideal at all. Let's do something about that. In order to fix that issue, we can head over to the support tab and find something that will dissipate our heat. For now, I'm simply going to add a set of coolers at, let's say, the top of the engines, and also go ahead and install an exhaust pipe. In order to rotate it, I simply need to press Q 
change its orientation and uh, make it be positioned exactly the way I want. Very easy. Now, if I decide to speed up with the afterburner, I'll build up heat as always, but it will happen more slowly and I'll be able to dissipate it faster as well. Wonderful, let's keep building. Now, the only ingredient we lack for a fun diesel punk vehicle are guns. Loads of guns. We can find them in the weapons tab. First and foremost, we will need ammunition for our uh, weapons. And this is a little bit of a tricky part. You need to choose well where exactly you're going to place your ammo storage as uh, your ammo storage can explode and cause a chain reaction that might destroy your entire vehicle. So try to hide it as well as possible and never, never keep it too, too close to your command block. For now, I'll decide to spread it out like so, so that even if my ammo blocks are destroyed, they will not explode so much as to destroy my command block as well. Alright, now that I have the ammo blocks, which I decided to move slightly further to the back while also moving my crew compartment more forward and refitting my vehicle with more armor, it is now time to install actual weapons. There's a plethora of options here as well. For instance, there are highly explosive guns that are excellent at taking down enemy lightly armored vehicles. There are also armor-piercing guns, which are ideal for striking down those heavily armored enemies. Or alternatively, if you want to burn your foes to a crisp, I recommend a rocket launcher with its excellent chance of fire. Me personally, for this vehicle, I decided to go for this particular gun, which has good rate of fire and decent enough armor penetration value, although it does have a limited cone of arc of firing. Let's install two of those, and then two more, because the more guns we have, the merrier. And I'm still not quite satisfied. So, since I already have quite a few armor-piercing guns, I'm going to also add some high-yielding explosive projectiles that I can get from these guns at the top of my vehicle. Great, this looks like a fearsome vessel already, but I can't shoot something that I can't see, right? Well, in order to deal with that issue, we will need to add some spotting blocks. Let's introduce them to you real quick. You can find them in the support tab, and they are typically called something like view front, or view front side, or view sphere. They will allow you to spot your enemies from further away, and they are quite essential in destroying your enemies before they can destroy you. Let's add a few of those real quick. Excellent! With three spotting blocks, I should be able to detect my enemies fast enough to destroy them before they can destroy me. So all now that is left to do with this vehicle, which is functional already and quite dangerous. Well, all that is left now, really, is to add some armor and also do a little bit of a paint job, so allow me to deal with that real quick. Look at this vehicle, isn't it fabulous? I colored it myself using the paint option down at the bottom of the screen, which allows you to quickly change the color and the armor material of any block that you can change the armor type of. Inside this tank, You'll never back down from a fight, and you'll look fabulous while tearing your enemies asunder. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something worthwhile from it. If you're interested to learn more about this game, then please uh, do check out our Kickstarter campaign and uh, look for the details and perhaps consider backing us if you're interested in this project. We will need all the help we can get and we will really appreciate your support as it will allow us to bring more features to Dieselbank Wars. Thank you for watching and good luck on the battlefield.